All right. So a quick overview of the Salesforce integration in HubSpot. If you navigate to your connected apps under integrations, that's where we will find all of the settings for this. I will click into Salesforce so we can take a look around. Um, so you're navigating through the tabs up here at the top that give us a pretty good overview of what's possible. The first thing you're going to see is the sync health. This is really helpful because it will automatically identify and flag anything that should be syncing that's not. So you can see, for example, here, we have a few pick list errors and um, it looks like these records, whoops, have an inactive owner in Salesforce. And you've also got these handy little pop-outs that show you exactly how to address the issue. And then once you're, once you think that you have corrected it, you can just click resync and HubSpot will try resyncing it. You've got to give it a minute and then uh, check back and we'll see if, if that resolved itself or if more work needs to be done here. The other thing you've got on this screen is your API call use. Um, you can see clearly we're, we're good on that limit, but it'll let you know here if you're getting close. So let's move on to the sync settings. Um, you've got two way sync settings. So this is just a quick overview of how it works, but then let's click in to see, um, data flowing from HubSpot to Salesforce. It's pretty common to use an integration list. So there's a, a list of contacts that we have set up that uh, these are the only ones that are gonna sync to Salesforce. That way, if you've got, uh, for example, a lot of newsletter subscribers in your database that you don't wanna have pushed to Salesforce quite yet, um, that's doable, not a problem. And then you've also got your settings for creating leads and contacts. So HubSpot only has one type of contact records. They're all just contacts. But in Salesforce, you've got contact records and lead records. So you have to tell the system if you want HubSpot to create leads in Salesforce or if you want it to create contacts and that settings right here. Um, and then you can also just do a little bit with um, setting up your state and country fields. And then second, we've got data flowing from Salesforce to HubSpot. So on the HubSpot side, we want to tell HubSpot, for example, if someone deletes a lead in Salesforce, are we going to delete that in HubSpot or not? This is all going to be customized based on um, your specific needs. Um, same situation for life cycle stages. And then you move on to um, the, the rest of these tabs are for, for mapping the properties between your contact object, your company object, and your deal object. Let's start with contacts. So this list gets, a, it's, it's long because these are all of the, the properties that you've got on your contact records. So a big part of the setup for this integration is just mapping everything. Um, so you wanna make sure the correct properties are mapped to each other and that you've also selected if, uh, for example, if you never want HubSpot to change one of the values, you would have it prefer Salesforce and less blank and then it would update you can also say, uh, always use Salesforce. So if I go to edit the mapping, doo -doo -doo, here are your options. And then next piece, we've got the company records um, where you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're just mapping company properties to account properties. Um, when you wanna add a new field mapping, it's very easy. So click add a new mapping and you can just select from these drop downs. One thing to be careful of is you can only map um, same type of fields to each other. So for example, if you have a single line text field in HubSpot, it won't let you map that to a pick list in Salesforce. It needs to be multi-select going to a pick list. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, next, we've got deal properties. So this is going to map opportunities from Salesforce to deals in HubSpot. This part um, can often be overlooked, but it's really important because this is how you're gonna get your full funnel attribution data. And that's usually what people are going for when they, they make this integration. So um, again, same situation here, just map the correct properties to each other and let HubSpot know uh, which way you want the sync to go for each property. So for deals, 
it's pretty common that you always want to use Salesforce because you don't want HubSpot for any reason to be updating an opportunity that someone is working. The lastly, we've got activities over here. Um, so in this example, none of this is, is turned on, but you've got this toggle up here at the top. And then you can just uh, select which things you want to sync between the two systems. So very easy, very user-friendly integration to use. Um, it can get a little bit more complex than this. So for example, oftentimes you'll want to configure settings on the Salesforce side as well um, for HubSpot to have permissions to do certain things and not other things. Um, a lot of that granularity is not possible on the HubSpot side. So it's really important to have um, someone work working on this that can understand both systems to make these connections. Um, lastly, if you have a custom object, you can sync custom objects as well, but it's a little more advanced than, than what we're doing in this video. So um, yeah, that's the high level overview of what's possible with the Salesforce integration with HubSpot.